are pardoned. And at the end of the day, this money is passed through the window. We can move beyond ethnicity, biases, religion and gender. And of course, we can rise to greatness. Remember, this is Elizabeth era and this is the early Hello viewers and listeners, today we are actually here with um, another wonderful guest. Um, I'm going to say it took me a whole lot, of, a whole lot, like um, I went through so much trying to get this particular guest. He's a wonderful person. Should I say he's smart? Of course he's very smart. You meet a whole lot of people every day. He is actually the Managing Director, NDDC, Niger Delta Development Commission, and um, he was a former Deputy Governor of Aquaibom State. I'm talking about no other than, um, should I call him Honorable His Excellency Nsima Udo Ikere. We're actually here in his office here in Abuja to have um, an interview with him. But before we do that, we want him to actually say hi to everybody. Well, um, good morning Nigerians. And um, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Sir. I didn't know that um, it was difficult getting me on the show because I know that once I got your invitation, I gladly accepted to appear. Okay. No, sir, he's a nice person. Um, people, he's a very nice man. Trust me, um, it's been fun here since I came in here since morning. It's been fun. He's a nice person. So, I'm going to be asking you some few questions. Okay. Um, a lot of people send in questions, but we had to really um, see them to know the particular ones that. Um, we'll go in for what we actually want to discuss with you. Well, concerning Aquaibom State also and your intention come um, the next elections, your intention. So we're going to be asking you a whole lot. So we'll start with the very first question. Um, this one came in from one of the people in Aquaibom State. He said, um, a lot of people are wondering why you, why you silently decant to APC without making a public declaration like other politicians. Is there a reason for that, sir? I didn't um, silently decamp from the PDP. Okay. Uh, for those uh, who have followed keenly the politics of Aquaibom State in Nigeria, they will know that um, in December 2014, mm -hmm. I led 21 other aspirants mm -hmm. to run for the the PDP primaries. Unfortunately, that entire exercise was a sham. Mm. It was um, a, a form of a crowning of a, a, a predetermined um, intention. Okay. And um, it was less than credible, less than democratic. And um, I let 21 other aspirants and we left the bed. We formed a group called G22. G22, which said, listen, we are saying no to impunity. We say no to lawlessness. We want things to be done right and things should follow due. I mean, there, there was a guideline, guidelines issued by the PDP at that time okay. of how the governorship primaries would be conducted, and we just insisted that you know, we should follow the right way. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. We came into Abuja here. We tried to get a uh, get audience with the leader of the party at the time, the party leadership. Yes. Um, nothing came out of it. We went to the president of the country, who was the leader of the party at the time. Nothing came out of it. And so after that, we returned after 40 days and 40 nights to our final state. And then we had a press conference. And we said during that press conference that we are totally opposed to how the governorship candidate of the party at that time emerged. And so that we declared that we would never recognize him as the candidate of the party. Okay. And, um, and that for today and forever we will not recognize I remember those exact words. Yeah. Um, and I read that um, press statement on behalf of G22. Mm. And it was after that that we, we left the party. If you recall, the president at the time, uh, Goodluck Jonathan, came to acquire them. Yes, to have the PDP presidential rally. Yes. And of course we didn't show up at the rally. None of the members of G22 showed up. Yes. So, if we refuse to show up at the presidential primaries, we refuse to meet the president at a private meeting, then yes. isn't that clear to you that there's something wrong somewhere? Sure. 
True. So it was after that that we left, and then of course I openly um, declared my support for the APC governorship candidate in the state in the 2015 election of our man or manner. Yes, you, you know, and then we started working with him. So what else do you do you want? Do you want uh, one big party? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like other other people do. Other. Um, um, I issued a statement, and that was enough. Okay. Then I went and registered in my ward. Party. And then I started working for the party. I started working for the governorship candidate of APC for the 2015 election and the president. You know, so. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Welcome. That question answered. And then we have the next one. He said, um, what is your relationship with the governors, governors of the NDDC states? Like we, have a, we have a fantastic relationship with the governors. Mm -hmm. The only NYCHA director um, governor that we haven't yet as a, as a board uh, been able to visit is the governor of Akwa State. Yes, we are actually coming to that. Too. Yeah, because but we've written to him, mm -hmm. asked for um, a time for the to, for a visit. Um, we're still waiting for him to give us a time, and I can assure you that any time he invites us or tells okay. us that there is an opening, okay. we will definitely visit with him. But we've visited all the others. In fact, some of them two, some three uh, visits okay. um, since we started. And we're working well with them. We're doing projects for the very first time. NDDC is collaborating with state governments to do projects. Okay, we're coming to that. We're actually coming to that concerning the projects. Okay. Yeah, we're coming to that. So, but uh, there's this one. He said, uh, "Can you say NDDC has done better?" So you can answer both question and others. Can you say NDDC has done better under your administration? What are your reasons? Um. When I was nominated by Mr. President, mm -hmm. um, I had the privilege, myself and the other members of the board, we had the privilege of uh, waiting for like three months or so mm -hmm. before we finally took office because the National Assembly were, went on recess, a two-month recess, shortly after the announcement, so we weren't screened. Mm -hmm. That gave us time to do a lot of um, work. Mm -hmm. We were able to look at the commission, look at what the problems are, look at what the issues are, and then we articulated a reform agenda attacked it, the four hour strategy, mm. um, which is what we've been implementing, you know, since we're, we got in there. Okay. We were committed to restructuring the balance sheet because we felt that um, there was a lot of um, over trading in NDDC, okay. a lot of projects in the book, so we've been able to streamline that now. We've cancelled well over a thousand projects, oh. non performing projects, projects okay. since we came on board. Okay. We've also um, we dedicated 70% of our budget mm. to complete existing projects, only 30% for new projects. But again, in 2018, we want to reduce that to 20% for new projects, 80% for ongoing projects. Yeah. Because the idea is clean up the balance sheet as much as possible, complete as many projects as you as can. can. All right? Instead of just bringing projects on board, then you don't have enough resources yes. to exactly. implement them and to work on them. And so you have thousands of projects are going non-completed. Okay. So we'll rather concentrate on completing projects instead of starting um, new, new projects. Yeah, so we, we've done, I think we've done very well there. We, we looked at the governance system, reformed the governance um, system, um, then go back to the core mandate of the NGDC, okay. the commission. They generally reaffirm ourselves, our staff, uh, to uh, doing what is right and proper. So. I mean, with what we've done, I'm happy with the results I've seen so far. Um, we may not be where we want to be yet, because of course, you know, that change is not... Um, NDDC is 17, 18 years old now, yeah. so it takes time to, mm. to change the culture. Um, but we're working on it. I'm okay. optimistic that it's going to, it's going to um, get there. Yeah. There's this one from someone who's actually one of the NDC state, but he lives in the UK. Mm -hmm. He said, and please, what is the situation with the Ogoni cleanup, with the Ogoni land cleanup? He wants to know the situation with the Ogoni. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, we are not um, responsible for the Ogoni cleanup. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a high prep project uh, that's been run by the Ministry of Environment, they are the ones in charge of the Ogoni cleanup. Yes. I incidentally, I sit on the governing council of, uh, of high prep. Um, a lot, you see, most of the, 
a lot of work has been done. Um, we've even had the, um, tests, uh, cleaning, because in the process of trying to select which contractors uh, would do the actual cleaning, we gave an opportunity to a lot of contractors to you know, try little areas mm -hmm. so we see how proficient um, they are. So that's ongoing. And then, but we spent a lot of time setting up the governance systems, the structure okay. of the place and getting the relevant approvals. Mm -hmm. So all of that's done now. For me. But again, like I said, NDTC is not in charge of the organic cleanup, so I'd rather not speak much on it. On this because it's someone else's responsibility. Okay, so it's IPEC, like you said, and he's really in charge of it. That's correct. But of course, he is part of the IPEC executives, am I right? Governing so, Council. Governing Council, so he, they're actually doing something about it. That's before we start with the Um So there's a question, this one has, has to do with um, a quiet on state. Um, we know that there is a lot of controversy going on in the state concerning the NDDC work and all that, but mm. we actually want to speak with you as an individual so that you tell them, um, like, like we always say on our show, you speak and you hear from the horse's mouth and then you know what is true and what is not. Okay, the very first question is, um, the Abak Ikodabasi Road has been abandoned by the NDDC after obstructing the state government from working on it. Is this true, sir? Absolutely untrue. Very, very untrue. Okay. The Abaki Karabasi Road is not um, yet um, awarded by the NDDC. It's an existing road. Okay. So nobody can say it's been abandoned. Okay. The federal government did um, budget for it mm -hmm. in budget 2017. Um, NDDC intends to partner with the federal government okay. to do that road so that we can fasten the process, but NDDC is going to partner with the Federal Ministry of Works. The Federal Ministry of Works would be the major driver, okay. but NDDC would partner and part fund the project, project. so that just to give it impetus, make it run faster. Okay, so we should keep our fingers crossed. Keep our fingers crossed. We're waiting for the Federal Ministry of Works. They have actually done the tender. Okay. Yes, they did the adverts, and you know they've gone to tender on that project. Okay. Um, but NDDC is committed. To helping the federal ministry of okay, so nobody actually obstructed the nothing. state government. The state government, I'm, I'm not even aware that they were planning to do it. So neither am I aware that they awarded the contract. Neither am I aware that the contractor moved to site. So whoever is saying that is totally okay. Thank you very much, sir. And the next question says: We noticed since you assumed office, there have been no meeting between you and your state governor, Governor Udon Emmanuel. Mm. Is there a cold war between you two? What is your relationship with him? There's absolutely no war with them. Um, I've spoken to him um, and I do speak to him as often as I can. Um, I've written letters to him as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've asked for a cost call, just like we asked for cost calls yeah. um, from other state governors state of the Niger Delta. Okay. All the others have granted. He's His calendar is full, I understand. Okay. And so he's waiting for an opening in his calendar. And I'm sure as soon as he has an opening, he would give us an appointment. And I can assure you that once we get that appointment, but ooh, sir, don't you ooh, think? Ooh, because on. it's I think I think it's been a, it's been a long time now, mm -hmm. and um, don't you think there's actually something going on somewhere? Probably um, maybe. I I refuse to speculate. Okay. Neither would I like to join people to to do that to to do that. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say. Um, you know, the, the answer I got, and that was directly from the governor himself, okay. was that um, his calendar is a bit full at the time, okay. and that when he has an opening, he will let me know. So I, he's the governor, and I, I take him by his word. So I'm waiting okay. and hoping that eventually I will get that. Opening. Yes, and then this, this next question, I actually also found it on one of the online newspapers where I was trying to do some reading. Um, and you talked a bit about it, but I actually really want you to elaborate on it here, please. He said, um, Akaibon State Government complained that the NDDC roads are substandard. What's your opinion on it? That the roads are substandard? And not to the um, extent where um, everybody is thinking, well, the, the government, or well, the, I think the Commissioner for um, Information or Works, mm -hmm. they had um, issues on this same land complaining that it's actually substandard. We actually want to know what your opinion on it is. Why are they saying your roads are substandard? There are legacy issues, legacy complaints um, about NDDC, which have been on for quite a while. I can only tell you what we've done to improve standards 
and um, in improve the quality of work that NTDC is offering. Mm. I called a meeting, first of all, of all the consultants that work for NTDC. Okay. Our design consultants, engineering consultants, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And then I, I, I impressed it upon them the need to design NDDC projects, bearing in mind that we are in a very, very challenging environment. Don't forget, yeah. NDDC, you have, I mean, the Niger Delta region, you have rainfall virtually nine, ten months of a year. True. Most simple, like 70%. Yeah. Of the landmass of the Niger Delta is below sea level. True. Um, a lot of challenges with the topography and the terrain. Because we are this challenged, it therefore means that the standard and the design for our roads and infrastructure generally must be the highest in the world. And so that's what we're using now. You, you notice that NDDC um, consultants, because I mean, the project you see on the field. Yeah. Right, is a result of the design that's been given or made by the, the consultants and so that's what we use to prepare the Bill of Engineering measurements and the scope of work. So now we've increased that. We've standardized um, our standards now. Okay. We've standardized um, you know, this, the, the specifications for our projects for the infrastructure so that we can have the very best quality. Okay. Having said that, you see, it's a bit um, funny that in the entire Niger Delta is only Akwaibom State that NDDC has been, is, is been accused mm. of doing poor quality work. I mean, what is the same quality that we're doing mm. in the other eight states? states yeah. So how come the respective commissioners for works have not left their own work mm. and concentrate on oversighting? It's, uh, I don't know why I've never, I don't even know the commissioner for works. I asked my state director one time to speak with him, you know, because I think for me it makes better sense that we should continue to collaborate with all the state the governments state government. and state governments in the Niger Delta. NDDC is not in competition with the state government. Sure. And we're not trying to take away the work of the state government. We intervene where we find that there's a need. Mm. Okay. And, um, um, it's in the interest of the state that we be allowed to work and to intervene rather than you know, facing some antagonism and obstructions to projects and so on and so forth. Yeah, please, sir, if you don't mind, we want to know some of the projects that NDC have done so far in Akwaibo State. We've done a lot of projects in Akwaibo State because, uh, like you said, mm -hmm. there are a lot of controversy concerning the NDC project. So, what we in did, State. I'll tell you that. Yes. Two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we issued a list of projects mm -hmm. that we've done in Akwaibo. State, okay. State only. We had to isolate Akwaibo and we issued it. It's online, is that right? Okay, that's beautiful. God, you've actually cleared that area. You've spoken to, you've spoken to us about it. Mm -hmm. So when anything is going on, everybody, the people that the projects are there for people to see. Exactly. You see, let me. You know, you said something. The commissioner for works. He went somewhere and said, "Oh, NDTC has not done uh, a single kilometer of road mm -hmm. in Akwaibo." I said, and I laughed. I laughed when he said that because personally, the road to my village was done by NDTC. And it's about three kilometers. It's completed, and we're using it. Okay. So <laughs> that <laughs> that is. I wonder who that actually handled that road. I wonder who did it. It was NDDC that did that project. Well, yes, um, you've actually heard, you're hearing, and um, I think we've been able to clear a lot of controversy. Like I always say, do not listen and do not comment on propagandas on social media until you are actually sure of where you're getting your information from it's very important so that we have this question for you he said uh, what are your plans for the Akwaibo people this is actually from a teacher in Akwaibo states he said what are your plans for the Akwaibo people and the state in terms of industrialization to curb the issue of unemployment and poverty in the states the reason why he's asking this is your intention um, to run as the next um, governor of Akwaibo State, he actually want to know because they are concerned about industrialization. We hear that there Let is so add, much. I'll tell you something. Okay. 
You see, industrialization is one area that I'm very passionate about personally. Okay. Um, if you recall, before I became deputy governor of Akwaibo State, mm -hmm. I was the executive chairman of um, Aki of Akwaibo Investment yes. Industrial yes. Promotion yes. Council. Yes. And, um, and what we were doing at the time, we, principally, we were concentrated on providing the enablers okay. that will make industrialization thrive in the state. And that's why, as, as uh, executive chairman of Akipok, I also was the chairman of the Aquibum, uh, the independent power, Ibo power plant. Okay, yes. You know, IPC Ibom Power Company. We built, completed, mm. and commissioned the first state government owned independent power plant in this country. Mm. 191 megawatts of electricity. Yes, sir. And it's you know, in production since then. Because we believe, I believe, that electricity is the greatest enabler yes. for industrialization. industrialization sure. It's one of the greatest enablers. Mm. Uh, so, industrialization is some er one area that I'm passionate about, and I know that the, 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 the role of government mm -hmm. is to provide the enabling environment for the private sector to drive mm -hmm. industrialization. Uh, unfortunately, my present um, assignment as MD of um, NDDC doesn't really um, cover mm -hmm. that aspect, that so I'm not able to answer that lady's question about uh, what plans I have for industrialization. No, he is saying for a private state, not as the NDDC chairman, okay. but MD. as an aspiring governor. Okay. There's been a lot of agitation mm. um, from several quarters in a private state mm. asking that I should join the governorship race. Mm. Um, that decision I've not yet taken. Okay. I'm still considering it. I'm still looking at um, a lot of things. Okay. Um, at the point where I decide mm. and announce my intention to run, okay. you can ask me that question again. All right, we'll come back. Let's so, you, as you've heard, um, he has not openly declared his intention um, to run for um, the next governor, to run for the, um, the position of the next governor in our uh, Fakwaibo state. So, those of you that actually have the speculations, please hold on until he publicly declares his intention. But having said that, okay. I must also add that as a member of the APC yes. and also as a major stakeholder in a quiet home state, don't forget that I served that state not just as deputy governor, yes. but I also served a quiet home state as an acting governor. Hmm. I can tell you that as a major stakeholder in a quiet home state that I'm very, very far from satisfied mm. with the performance of the current government. Okay. I believe that Akwaibom deserves much, much better, better than what, than what we're really getting right now. And I would be, um, uh, I think um, I'll be very involved mm. in the next process to ensure that we have a change in the government in of the the government government of Akwaibom. Akwaibom. Yes. Thank you very much. Well, yes, we've almost come to the end of this interview session with His Excellency Nsima Udoikere. But I'm going to ask you this last question. Let's hear what you have to say about this. He said, What will you want to, what would you love to be remembered for when you finally leave the NDDC office? I would like to be remembered as the MD that came to make NDDC run efficiently, effectively. You know, according to international best practice, I'm committed to ensuring that the governance systems in NTDC are totally overhauled and you know institutionalized so that international best practice you know will be followed in running um, the activities of the commission. Okay. I like to be seen as that MD that came and concentrated on the core mandate mm. of the commission. And that's why you're trying to, we're trying to complete the project. The project so we're not mm -hmm. just interested in starting new projects as most people would love to do. We just, you know, so that the, the people of the Niger Delta mm -hmm. would actually have 
um, the take full advantage and benefit of the various projects dotting the landscape. You know, that's why we're trying to complete this project. And if I'm able to do this, I'll be happy. Right, Chris, you will. Well, thank you very much, sir. We want to know what your words are for the youth, because it's always the youth here in Nigeria, always us. I've been engaging the youth, particularly the youth of the Niger Delta. Mm. And my prayer and hope um, is that at the end of the day, we'll have youths that will be very proud of youths that are as productive as we know they have the right capacities to be. We know that Niger Delta youths are very energetic, very brilliant um, people. Unfortunately, um, what people know Niger Delta youths for, unfortunately, is violence. A lot of violence. And it is not good for us, it's not um, helping us, it's actually driving away investments. Sure. away from the region. I, I always like to use the, the example of um, the Dangote refinery. Mm. You see, when I was in secondary school, in an economics class, I was taught that one of the, the factors, determinants mm. of the uh, location of industries is nearness to the source of raw materials. True. And automatically that means that a refinery would ordinarily or should ordinarily be built mm -hmm. where you have crude oil. Mm -hmm. A situation where the biggest refinery in the world being built by liquid angle is being built in Lagos. Mm -hmm. sure. And where hundreds of kilometers of pipelines costing hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm maybe billions of dollars, is being laid, pipeline, taking the crude to Lagos. Because if that refinery was built in the Niger Delta area, then you don't have to spend yeah, that kind of money piping, piping um, crude to Lagos. But the only reason that refinery is not in the Niger Delta is because of the security situation. No industrialist, no businessman, who want to come and put his, his investment in an area that the security is not guaranteed. Sure. Because if anything goes wrong, he loses virtually all he has put in there. He loses investment, loses maybe some of it is bank loans, which he still will have to pay back, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So my appeal to the youth of the Niger Delta that they should please embrace peace. They should embrace peace. They should shun militancy. Mm. and allow investments to thrive in the region. That way, once you have this private sector presence, mm. heavy private sector presence in the Niger Delta, yeah. you will have jobs. True. The, the, the GDP of the area will increase. Will increase true. You know, general prosperity. Because you know, there are a lot of multiplier effects yeah. that um, would arise out of um, having businesses thrive in the area. And that's why we've restored the postgraduate program of the Niger Talks, um, of the NDDs. Um, when we came in, we discovered that there were a lot of problems with the scholarship program. And so we had to streamline the program. And so we suspended it for one year. Mm. A lot of people who were in universities outside this country were not paid and they were making, you know, making life so difficult for them. Well, so we had to try and clean up all of those backlogs, clean up the system, streamline the process. Mm -hmm. Then now that we are sure that we have a process um, that is properly streamlined, yeah. um, um, then we are re re you know, resuming that program. Because we believe that if you give them the proper education, it will help to create um, the, the youth and if, eventually the Nigerians. Yeah. The type of Nigerian that we would like to see True. in the future. True. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank well, viewers, we actually come to the end of this interview. Um, it's to your girl, Elizabeth Era. Until next time, we will come to you with another wonderful guest. Do stay with us and please stop listening or commenting, contributing to propaganda on social media. Thank you.